Follow Name Explain on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as joining my Facebook group, Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Check out the links down below. Around two years ago, I made a little update video of sorts, announcing that I would no longer be focusing on just the origin of names, and instead be expanding the horizons of the channel to cover linguistics as a whole. I did this for a couple of reasons. First off, because linguistics is really, really cool, but also because it gave me so much more grounds to cover here on the channel. That's because linguistics is an unfathomably massive area of study. Anyone who has studied linguistics, whether that be formally in an academic setting or just by googling random stuff like I do, we'll notice that linguistics branches off in so many different directions and areas of expertise. The huge amount of areas that linguistics covers is easy to understand. It's the case because language is used pretty much everywhere, meaning that in any way language can be used, it can be studied. Language is the tool we use to understand literally everything around us, meaning there is much ground to cover when it comes to actually understanding language itself. It can be a little bit daunting for anyone first looking into studying languages and linguistics. So, this video is a breakdown of sorts of the major branches of linguistics out there. It's definitely not going to cover every single branch of linguistics because that video would take forever to make. Maybe there's always been an area of linguistics you enjoyed but never really knew it had a proper name. Or maybe you want to specialise in a specific part of the study of language but don't really know which one. Hopefully this video will make things a tad clearer to everyone. So to understand the breakdown of the field of linguistics, we need to understand that it breaks down into major branches and subfields. We're going to start by looking at the major branches. These major branches cover the broad strokes of language and are more the building blocks of how languages work as a whole. Of course, they can apply to languages found all across the globe too, but work differently in those different languages. One of the most important major branches of linguistics is phonology. Phonology is all about understanding the pattern of sounds used in a language language and across different languages. It teaches us how we can use sound to create entirely new words and understand that fact. For example, the words of cat and bat are identical minus the first letter, which gives these two words different sounds at the start of them. This different sound gives these two words completely different meanings. Specific sounds in languages are called phonemes, hence the name. Phonology is very broad in its approach to how we study it. It can also be used to understand why different letters sound different in different languages like how Z sounds different in Chinese compared to English. In phonology, we also work under the pretense that sound is the same all the time. That of course isn't actually the case. People say the same sound in slightly different ways for a variety of reasons. If we want to study this in particular, we go to a different branch of linguistics called phonetics. While phonology and phonetics might have similar sounding names, they are different things. Phonetics is the study of sound in a more real world setting, like understanding why some someone with a speech impediment might say something differently to someone else. Basically, phonology is the study of the sounds of language in theory, while phonetics is the study of the sounds of languages in real world practice. The next major branch is something called syntax. Syntax is less about the sounds languages make and more about the structure of language in its written and spoken forms as a whole. Syntax is all about the study of word order in a sentence and understanding that when words are said in different orders, they can change the entire meaning of a phrase. Take the examples of I only eat pickles and only I eat pickles. These two sentences have the exact same words in them, but the order of them change the sentence's meaning. And for the record, I don't only eat pickles as much as I'd want to. Syntax really changes across languages, with some languages placing verbs in front of adjectives and vice versa. When learning a second language, it is really important to understand how that language's syntax works, especially if it's different to your first language. Another major branch is with semantics. Semantics is the study of specific words and their meaning. This is when we could look into two different words that kind of have the same meaning, or two words that are the same but have different meanings. For example, start and beginning have similar meanings, but you used in different scenarios, like you would most likely say the start of a race as opposed to the beginning of a race. Saying the beginning of a race just sounds a bit strange. Start is used for more physical things like a race, whereas beginning is used for more abstract concepts like the beginning of a story in example. The reason we use these different words can often depend on context and historical usage of those words. An example of the same word having different meanings is bark. Bark can mean the texture of a tree or the sound a dog makes. While they are the same word, you use them in completely different circumstances. Like you wouldn't say the tree's bark was loud. 
Then we have morphology. This is when we study the actual structure of words, how they are formed and how they can be changed and interact with other words. Morphology looks into how words are formed and the components that make them up, such as how we can add an S to the end of a word like pelican and change it into the brand new word of pelicans, which means multiple of that bird. We actually did a whole video on morphology a very long time ago. Morphology is one of the main things we focus on here at Name Explain. However, morphology and etymology Etymology are actually two different things. Etymology is a subcategory of a different field we'll highlight later on. The final major branch is something called pragmatics. This is when we study how language is actually being used in the real world. Pragmatics is when we kind of take all the theory on language and throw it out the window, because language really can't be contained to just information found in a textbook. For example, while we are taught that in theory, if someone says I'm so happy right now, it means they're having a good time, pragmatics teaches us there is more to language than just the words being spoken. Pragmatics teaches us to look into the context of the words being used and how they're actually being said. So someone could say, I'm so happy right now, but actually be saying it sarcastically because they aren't actually happy. This is why when someone is being very matter of fact and not taking in other factors, we call them pragmatic. That's the major branches of linguistics covered, but there is so much more to language. We can now look into the subfields of linguistics. This is when we take those major branches of linguistics and apply them to specific situations and fields. There are a huge amount of subfields in linguistics, and this is because, as mentioned, language is used everywhere. If it exists, it means the language used within it can be examined and studied too. We shall definitely not be looking into all of these however. Don't worry, I'm not going to make you all look into the language of maths. Though in all honesty, the language of maths could be a video unto itself. While maths is the worst, the language is really interesting. One of the biggest subfields of linguistics is psycholinguistics. If you couldn't tell by the name, psycholinguistics is all about language in our minds and how we process words and phrases. One of the key areas of study in this field is looking into how our brains actually acquire and learn languages. It can also be studying how people use language after significant brain injuries. Psychology and linguistics really go hand in hand. It's why someone like Noam Chomsky, despite being a linguist, is so influential in the world of psychology. A somewhat similar subfield is sociolinguistics. This is where we study and look into how language is used across a society. Slight tangent, but this is actually my personal favourite area of study. I adore sociolinguistics. Linguistics and want to make way more videos on the subject matter. For example, sociolinguistics can look into how certain words fall in and out of favour with society, like certain words now deemed rude and offensive that were once more commonplace. In regards to names, a great example is with the name Karen and how its meaning has shifted dramatically in society in recent years. Computational linguistics is kind of the opposite of psycholinguistics. It's the study of language used in computers and technology. It's very linked with computer science, but can be used in other places, like the aforementioned maths. But as mentioned, we aren't talking about maths today. Its presence has expanded greatly recently, with the wider public knowledge of chatbots and language-based AIs like ChatGPT. Computational linguistics is just as much about understanding how to use language in computers as it is how computers use language. There's also comparative linguistics, which is more or less what it sounds like, when we study and compare two languages to one another to figure out their similarities. It's used to figure out how languages relate to one another, like how all the languages of Proto-Indo-European connect to each other. It's very much related to historical linguistics. Historical linguistics is the subfield of linguistics that we use to study how languages and words have changed over time and throughout history. This could be comparing Old English to Modern English, or even looking back further into how, say, Latin split into the modern Romance languages. Historical linguistics can apply to specific words too, and how they have changed and were initially formed. This is where etymology, my area of expertise I suppose, falls into line. Etymology is seen as a subsection of historical linguistics, as etymology, in its broadest sense, is the history of specific words and how they came to be and have changed over time. Some linguists go a step further back in time with the study of paleolinguistics. This is the study of language from the far past of human civilization. Of course, by going back this far, it can be hard to make any actual sort of conclusive studies on the language, as at this time in human history, it was barely recorded. But the idea of paleolinguistics is that if we could go back far enough, we could figure out more about how languages evolved into what they are today. 
Coming more into the modern world yet again, we have applied linguistics. This is the area of language study where we look into how language can help solve real life issues and problems. It's literally where we apply linguistics, hence the name. It seems to be deeply linked to sociolinguistics, but whereas that is more theory, applied linguistics is far more practical. We could use applied linguistics when a new word emerges into common usage, which has become debated, and we need to figure out how and when that word should be used exactly. Finally, for now, we have stylistics. This is the study of individual language styles, like it could be looking at how one author in particular uses language, or how one person specifically talks. This could be done with certain politicians who have very unique ways of speaking and using language. I'm sure a few may be coming to mind right now. While that is the main branches and subfields of linguistics, there is still so much more out there. Like I've said a couple times now, language is used in pretty much every aspect of our lives, so it can be studied. For example, we could look into how language is used across video games, which words have been chosen to be used in them, and the words formed from gaming. Or we could even study the specific language used by a certain film director, or how a character in a TV show uses words specifically. There is so many options in the world of language, and while this video has been a brief overview of the main branches, I implore you to research into whichever one appeals to you most. Think of this as an introduction of sorts to name explain you. However, the homework is completely optional, and unlike actual universities, I don't charge ridiculous tuition fees. Though a dollar a month on Patreon would be appreciated if you've learned anything from my videos over the years. Speaking of which, this video topic was suggested by Nancy Moon Smith over on my Patreon. Every Wednesday, I put up a video request post over on my Patreon for my awesome patrons to leave video ideas on. I then pick one of those ideas to be turned into a video the following Wednesday. So if you have a great idea for a Name Explain video and wish to enjoy Name Explain videos ad free, as well as get exclusive content and your name at the end of these videos, then why not support the channel on Patreon? It takes just one dollar a month to help the channel in a huge way and gets you all of these amazing benefits. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Name Explain depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explain videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.